Is Prime Ghana records first case of community infection of the more transmissible Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2, the public is advised to adhere to the safety protocols. Also in this bulletin, Chief of Army Staff apologizes to the people of Wa for the conduct of the soldiers caught on tape brutalizing some residents of the town Thursday. I want to fish out today all those who were involved in this and exact the maximum punishment according to our code of service discipline. Defence Minister Dominic Nitewul says the soldiers who were involved have been identified and will be sanctioned. The military immediately issued a statement this morning condemning what has happened and promising to discipline the, the officers who did that. The minority is meanwhile demanding a parliamentary probe. Mm -hmm. Vice President Mahmoud Baumia leads government delegation to a Jirata commissariate with the people following the killing of two civilians during a street protest on Tuesday. The Vice President will visit families of all the deceased and the injured too. He will also join Muslims at the mosque for the Juma prayer. Meanwhile, some suspects held in connection with the murder which sparked the protests in Ejura have been arraigned. Also in this bulletin, scrap dealers displaced by relocation of onion traders from Agbubloshi appeal for a new site to conduct their business. A man came. He took us to a parcel of land. If you look at the size of, the size of that land, it's not even up to quarter of what we are occupying. In business, the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System says all necessary security features have been implemented to ensure a robust electronic payment platform as the country migrates to a cashless economy. From the development of the solution point of view, I can give you the assurance that from the gifts and the financial institutions, we've used the highest standard that exists. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Joining us Prime is coming to you live from our studios in Kukum Limle on your digital terrestrial TV because we're free to air on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. This is the home of independent, fearless, credible and impactful journalism. Do stay tuned in for the details. And thanks so much for choosing us. The Asoka District Court has been told of the cruel manner in which social activist Ibrahim Mohammed, also known as Kaka Macho, was brutally assaulted, leading to his eventual death at Ejira in the Ashanti region. Ibrahim Mohammed died three days after the attack. Briefing the court, Chief Superintendent Kofi Blagoji, the Ashanti Region Judicial Police Officer, said Kaka's assailants, armed with dangerous implements, first attacked his occipital region till he became unconscious at about 1.30 a.m. on June 26, 2021. On him, interior of our security desk was in court and has filed this report. According to Chief Superintendent Kofi Blagoji, Kaka was returning home on his motorbike when the accused persons, Fuseni Alasa Ebucha, Ibrahim Isaka, also known as Enyas, and Idi Mohammed, also known as Chuboros, took it cellar and blacksmith respectively, attack him whilst entering the house. Even when he became unconscious, the accused persons did not stop but continued beating him. The accused persons left him in that unconscious state and absconded. Kaka was later sent to the Ejira Government Hospital but was referred to the Konvanoche Teaching Hospital where he was on admission until his death on June 28, 2021 at 1.40 a.m. The accused persons have since been charged for conspiracy to commit crime and murder contrary to Section 46 of the Criminal Offences Act Act 29 of 1960. Prosecution, led by Chief Superintendent Blaguji, pleaded with the court to remand the accused persons into police custody to enable the police do thorough investigations. The court, presided by her worship Akria Edubuahin, remanded the accused to reappear on July 22, 2021. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interior, reporting.
We'll be continuing shortly with developments on the Girard deaths, but now Ghana has recorded its first community infection of the more transmissible Delta variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The case is an indication the variant which was detected in travelers who arrived at the Kotoka International Airport some months ago has now found its way into the community. The number of COVID-19 cases in Ghana has declined considerably in the last few months, but the discovery of the new variant in the community has has the potential to cause a spike in cases. In the latest update on Ghana's COVID-19 cases, June 26, there were 85 new cases and 1,674 active cases. The death toll stood at 796. Now joining us via Zoom is Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumar Boaji. Thank you very much, Doc, for your time. Doc, what are the details of this discovery? Kindly well, unmute uh, for me, you. Doc. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, as we mentioned, since January, we've been doing sequencing um, through a part of our surveillance. And so cases picked up at the airport, we do sequencing. We also started community-based sequencing. At the last uh, report we had discussed, I uh, mentioned that, yes, we have uh, discovered six variants of the Delta variants at the airport from travelers. Uh, however, we hadn't identified anyone yet in the community, even though we have the, the other variants, Alpha, etc. cetera. Um, last night, as part of the routine surveillance, uh, we were informed that Noguchi had picked up some uh, Delta variants. And we are currently investigating and also looking at the other extent as to whether is it just an isolated cluster or it's more generalized? And that's why we have in the statement that was issued by the Ministry of Information that by Sunday we'll give a full, full briefing as we have to put in all the other data to see where exactly are we and whilst we also try to work towards uh, any further containment and prepare for it. Mm. Look, look, when was this variant detected and, and what are the implications for the spread in the community? Yeah, I mean, the report came in late last night. And um, that indication is that, yes, this is a more a variant that spreads faster than usual. And so we need to ensure that our um, protocols are adhered. I mean, the protocols are work for all, whether it's uh, Delta, Kappa, or Alpha, or whatever we have. But we need to ensure that we are protected. We are wearing our mask. We may not have had enough people vaccinated, but at least you still have the option of wearing your mask, using the social distancing uh, effectively, ensuring that there's no mask gathering as uh, minimized as much as possible, and also improving our ventilation. I think this uh, principle still holds, irrespective of the kind of variant we are dealing with. But, but when did this person uh, test positive, do we know? We are still investigating. I mean, this is just a very fresh. I mean, as you know, this is just very, very important news that we need to ensure that we put it out there. Further investigations will be uh, made to see where are the samples coming from, whom are they checking, is the person, uh, it, uh, where is the which community where they're living in. So as we continue to, to respond. Doc, what advice are you giving to the public? I mean, now that uh, we found the variant in our communities. Yes, to show that these things are going to be regular occurrences. Um, as long as the disease is there, you may be coming up with other variants. But the most important thing is people must protect themselves. We must wear our mask uh, in public. We must do the social distancing schools, everybody must provide, the abide by the protocol that have been prescribed. And that's worked for many, and that's worked for many countries. And I think once we adhere to it, irrespective of whether you've had a case, or even if you are fully vaccinated, it's still important that you protect yourself because so far, no vaccine gives you 100% protection. So and if you're picking up, you may give it to somebody who may not be protected. So as it stands now, we don't know which community um, this was found. Well, I'm sure by Sunday we'll be able to um, look at it. Currently, we are having, we don't have a generalized outbreak, even though you've seen the uh, active cases go up slightly. There are sporadic outbreaks. I mean, there are 
clusters of outbreaks that you have say like maybe uh, a mine may have a lot of cases because of uh, poor adherence to protocols. You may have a facility, a workplace. That's what we are having. And uh, currently, uh, we are looking at all that to see that which clusters are this coming from. We just from the routine, and then we'll be able to give you full details on Sunday. Doc, before you go, would you advise tighter restrictions on public gatherings? Well, I think the restrictions are there. It's the most important is adherence to the to the restrictions that currently exist. I mean, if we wear a mask, if we avoid mask gathering, if we all do social distancing, irrespective of where you are, I think I will still be protected. But I think we'll continue studying the system. If you see a certain pattern, that means that there are some further restrictions need to come in. We will provide the necessary advice for the authority to take that decision. I'm grateful for your time. Director General of Thank Ghana you. Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabuaje, there. We're still live on Joy News Prime. We'll take a break when we return. There is more in this bulletin. But before we go, then let's go back to Ejira, where Chief Imam Sheikh Noon Shaributu says a thorough work by the three member committee investigating the Ejira shooting will help build an anti violent society. He believes serving justice in the case is the only way to ensure lasting peace is brought to Ejira. The Chief Imam joined the Vice President, Dr. Baumia, and other government officials to visit families of victims in the Ejira shooting incident. Nana Ojima has more in the following report. The vice president was accompanied by the Minister for National Security, Albert Kandapa, Chief Imam, Sheikh Nuhu Sharbutu, and his entourage joined the vice president to visit the Muslim dominant community. At a call on the Ejra chief, Nana Osei Shedi II, Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensa, stated the reason for the visit. <laughs> The vice president will visit families of all the deceased and the injured too. He will also join Muslims at the mosque for the Juma prayer. Muntala Muhammad and Abdul Nasir Yusuf were allegedly shot and killed by security officers in an attempt to disperse a rioting crowd protesting the killing of social media activist Ibrahim Mohammed, popularly known as Kaka. The shooting has since attracted national attention with a committee established to investigate the matter in 10 days. Sheikh Arim Yao Shaibu, speaking to the media on behalf of the chief imam, said the approach should focus on establishing justice and guarding against reoccurrence. Um, we want to build a community where um, we are able to resolve conflicts without violence. We want to build a culture that is anti-violence, um, a non-violent mindset at the national level that is prepared to reject any form of violence as a means of obtaining one's interest and so on. And, and I think that such approach to establish justice uh, is one of the means by which we can prevent the reoccurrence of, 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 of these things. So, Despite assurance from the Interior Ministry that the Committee of Distinguished Individuals will do a good job, residents of Edra are divided over the committee's work. But the chief imam is expecting a diligent job. That they will do a very diligent work. Uh, they must be guided by the principles of honesty honesty and truth, um, they must be guided by the principle of justice, I would say principle which is universal, uh, the principle in which we can all guarantee our rights and protection. Um, first of all to unravel, unravel the truth about the whole incident and secondly to ensure that justice um, is done. I think that once we are able to get there, the chief mom will be satisfied. The chief mom it has a strong inclination to the ethics, ethics of love, integrity, justice, honesty, and truth as part and parcel of our national uh, unity project. Um, and so this is the expectation. But in addition to that, Chief Mam is expecting all those who have been affected to remain calm 
all those who have been affected to remain calm, allow the authorities to do their work. The team visited families of the three who died to commiserate with them. A donation of 20,000 CDs was made to each of the families with injured receiving 10,000 CDs each. For Joy News, Nane Ojima, Edra. The National Democratic Congress says it is skeptical about the outcome of the Committee of Inquiry set up to investigate the violence that led to the deaths of two people at Ejira in the Ashanti region. In an interview with Joy News, Director of Elections of the party, Elvis Efri Ankara, questioned the neutrality of one of the committee members, Vladimir Enchidanso. I feel sorry for the committee members because they've become victims of the lack of credibility of the Nanado led government. Okay? Um, two of them, I don't even know them. I've never had an interaction with them. Uh, Dr. Vladimir Chidaso was my lecturer at Lesia for my master's. So I know him. When it comes to academic capability and competence, he, he's, I'll give him A. But however, I have issues because of late, uh, some of his utterances, I keep on, is this the same Dr. Vladimir Chidaso that I know? Because this is Dr. Vladimir Chidanso, who after this election said this was the best organized election ever in the history of Ghana. Best organized elections? Who have you spoken to? Which polling station were you? Best organized elections? This is an election where we have over 300,000 rejected ballots. We've had bloodshed. People died in Ablekuma Central. People died in Etechima. How elections where results were declared and on, on, on gunpoint. So how can you, an academic, an intellectual, say that this was the best organized election. My biggest regret was that when he said those things, I should have listened to my instincts. I should have responded. Because I was going to respond that the Vladimir Chidan, so I know it's not the same one that I'm listening to. He sounds like somebody who is at looking to attract attention from the government. Lo and behold. So I have issues. However, he should prove us wrong. So the members of the committee, they should prove us wrong. In any case, legitimate questions have been asked. And in parliament, we have a commission of inquiry that has the powers of a high court, has the powers to subpoena people, has the powers to compel witnesses, has the powers to get witnesses to bring documents. Mm. Nothing came out of it. So how much less a ministerial committee under a minister who himself may perhaps be a subject of investigation? Again, Dr. Vladimir Chidanso is an employee of the Ghana Armed Forces. Are you aware? He's the dean of the, the, the Ghana Forces staff and command college. So the Ghana Forces employs him. Let's see how it pans out. But for people who say that, oh, they've set up a committee so we should keep quiet, we won't keep quiet. We have every legitimate cause to question the committee, one, and also to raise issues about all the other incidents that have happened, including the Ayawaso West Wagon Commission and all the things that they brought out that nothing has, has come out of it. So we have every reason to be skeptical. If you set up a commission of inquiry. He says many of the perpetrators of violence go unpunished because there's a deliberate attempt by the president, Ekofoado, and his administration to create an environment of fear in the country, one devoid of criticism. So you see, these things have been going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. We'll talk about it for a day or two, one week, three weeks, four months, and then it happens again. Look at what happened in Y yesterday. What happened in Y yesterday is because those people had the audacity because they've been doing it and nothing has been. They've seen their colleagues do it, nothing happens to them. So they are emboldened. My brother, our democracy is in danger. Let's speak the truth for once. Where we are heading towards is frightening. It is about time we all stood up to defend our democracy and our motherland. Democracy. Because the people are suppressed. They are not allowed to speak. You go on demonstration, people are shot, people are beaten, people are intimidated, suppressed. Capture of silence. So that is what is happening. So the Nana Akufuado government and his MPP are benefiting politically from all these things that is going on. Granted, one may argue that he is not the one who maybe directly authorizes them. But by the fact, virtue of the fact that when these things happen, and he has the opportunity to sanction them, to send a clear signal that is not in favor of them, he doesn't. And the effect is that because it creates an atmosphere of intimidation, and even you media people tell us privately that, Charlie, you are careful, you know, because threats here and there. Thank God for Joy FM. We all saw the videos. 
Look at the distance between the people and the, 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 the police and soldiers. Look at the distance. And they were even retreating. We went to the hospital. The medical superintendent told us, the gunshots to the back. People were retreating. We all saw a so-called policeman or soldier squatting and aiming at innocent civilians. What happened during the registration? For the first time in the history of this country, registration, bloody. Poor Silas lost his life. Howard Kumson, she claims she shot people. Bloodshed all over. Howard Kumson today has been promoted. She's now a cabinet minister. If the president was displeased with her actions, would he have promoted her, given her a higher level of responsibility, where the national security and communications ministers are not in cabinet, and yet how Akumsun finds herself in cabinet? Promotions beyond a certain rank. There's also been talking about the party's decision to demonstrate next week Tuesday. Whichever way it is, would the, the, the youth would have still gone on that demonstration anyway. Yeah. It's not a violent demonstration. And you see, let's stop this business of trying to criminalize demonstrations. Okay. We're in a democracy. Citizens have a right to demonstrate. It is a legitimate activity. Uh, that demonstration that uh, Colonel Furiata was wearing blouse, those, what do you call them? Occupy. Occupy Haven't you seen all those demonstrations? Wasn't another part of demonstrations? He, I'm told he, on record about 54 demonstrations. When we were in university, we did 11 demonstrations in my time as SSC president. There is nothing wrong with demonstrating. This country will not collapse because of demonstration. It is better for people to demonstrate and show their anger about what is happening than for them to resort to other means. In a democracy, demonstrations are legitimate tools of people showing their anger and displeasure with what is going on. Look, this country is sliding downwards. Our democracy is sliding downwards. The democracy that we have built that will become a beacon for the entire continent. It is going down. Every youth, everybody, every Ghanaian citizen who is concerned about where this country is going must join that demonstration. You, nobody should compel you. Wherever you hear them, move, wear your red armband and join them. Because it is better for us to show the government our anger. Those who are saying four more, four more, we have three and a half years more. It's a long journey. Uh, even though it will come soon. So it is better to send a signal to them that look, the trajectory you are leading us is very dangerous and prick their conscience if they still have any. Elvis Afrian Christ, Director of Elections uh, for the NDC, the Democratic Congress uh, Party says the police have finally given them the go-ahead to embark on their planned demonstration on July 6th. The police earlier refused to provide security for the demonstration, citing the imposition of COVID-19 restrictions. The party, however, says the police has revised its stance after a meeting with the IGP. The NDC says it is embarking on the demonstration to protest police and military brutalities and demand social justice for unemployed youth. On phone with me is Sam George. We have been uh, by, he's the MP for Ningo Pram Pram. Uh, I'm grateful for your time, Honorable Sam George. First, what ensued in the meeting with the IGP and what made them change their stance on providing security for your planned demonstration? Well, good evening, Aisha. Uh, good evening to your listeners and viewers. Um, the IGP asked for a meeting this evening, and we met up with him. We made it clear from the onset that we had not requested for security from the police. We had only notified them. The IGP was very quick, and let me give credit to the IGP here. It was very quick to let us know that the response that had come into the media was not from his office. It had come from the Greater Accra Regional Command. The regional commander was in that meeting. And the IGP made it clear that that was not his position. Uh, he believed in the freedom of and the right of citizens to demonstrate. And so for him, his challenge was actually not with demonstration, but with the route that had been planned uh, or originally planned to be used. If you remember, we had said that we were going to have demonstrators converge from three different parts of the city. And so the IGP appealed to us that looking at the police to citizen ratio and the constraints of numbers that they have and other ancillary challenges that the police is dealing with, he will be grateful if we reconsider our mobilization efforts and made it 
from one location instead of from three locations, because from three locations would have meant that they would have had to deploy three times the number of people. I mean, because we are also in this democratic uh, enterprise, we said we were comfortable with it. And so there and then, my the national youth organizer who led this engagement, under whose auspices we are having this demonstration, uh, George Ward with us, who were there, and the decision was taken that we would streamline it into one move, one mobilization point, which would be the Accra Mall, and we will move from Accra Mall all the way to the Jubilee House, the Flagstaff House, to hand over a petition, then continue to Parliament House to hand over another petition to the Right Honourable Speaker. At that point, Mami Atiwa Ado, who is Director General for Welfare, stepped in and said she felt that our route and the timing would affect traffic. But we insisted and said, well, there is no part of the city that doesn't have traffic in the morning. But what we could also do, again, as a sign of goodwill, would be that we would take oncoming traffic, the lane of oncoming traffic, which doesn't have a lot of traffic in the morning, instead of staying on the outbound side of the road, which has a lot of traffic, we would take the district on bound side of the road. And that was agreeable to all. Again, IGP raised the issue of many a demonstration around a major medical facility in the 37 hospital. And the hospital. All right, I think we lost uh, Sam George there, but he made the point that uh, Tuesday the demonstration will come on his MP for Ningo Pram Pram. To other stories, the Ghana Police Service has indeed confirmed it will provide security for the match for justice by the NDC youth. In a post on Twitter, the service said the police are poised to provide the necessary security for the safety of the planned demonstration by the youth of the National Democratic Congress on Tuesday, 6th July 2021. The Inspector General of Police, Mr. James Opon Bueno, has held a meeting with the organizers at the police headquarters Accra on 2nd July 2021. All matters relating to the match was discussed and agreed, including the routes and COVID-19 protocols. We're still live on Joy News Prime. We are back shortly with business. Stay tuned. <music> Hello there, good evening. Welcome to business here on Joy News Prime. My name is Gifty Andapia. Now, the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System says all necessary security features have been implemented to ensure a robust electronic payment system as a country migrates to a cashless economy. According to Chief Executive Archie Hesse, this will drive the country's cash life and digitization agenda. There is more in this report. The Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System gives together with partner institutions is holding a series of activities at the country's major malls to create awareness on adoption of GHQR code for payments. The first in a series was held Friday at the Junction Mall in Nungwa, a suburb of Accra. Chief Executive of GIFS, Achi Hesse, says all necessary security features have been implemented to ensure a robust electronic payment system as the country migrates to a cashless economy. Well, fraud comes in two areas. One, from the development of the solution, and then also the usage. From the development of the solution point of view, I can give you the assurance that from the gifts and the financial institutions, we've used the highest standard that exists. Now, you made mention of the usage angle. It's in that regard why they are, it, we could have just scanned and then type in the amount and then off you go. But we have included the possibility where you actually see the merchants that you are paying for. That is one of the measures that we have included in our solutions to mitigate against fraud. But if, let's say, for example, I take your phone and I know your PIN number, you have compromised your PIN number. So you give me your PIN number and I use it. Under the circumstance, there's nothing anybody can do. Mr. Hesse further stressed the need for Ghana to transform into a cashless economy with the electronic payment system. The central bank uses a lot of foreign money to pay for the cash or the currencies, the paper currencies that have been printed. Secondly, the banks, the central banks again, use a lot of money for the distribution. It has to be followed by armed policemen, etc. 
these are all inherent costs that we would have to forego if we all migrate uh, or start uh, uh, transacting cash light uh, uh, electronically. In that regard, so if you move away from cash, it's important to know that you are embarking on a journey, you are supporting a journey to support the development of the country. Officials of various banks also joined the team from Gifts at the Mall to educate the public as well as take shoppers through the process of paying with GHQR. In process, um, GHQR is a lifesaver for um, our industry because with COVID and um, with convenience we're selling now, we believe that it, it will definitely help our customers um, cut down um, the long process in making payments and also the promise of security because you tap or you scan and then it leaves your account, it pays instantly or you dial um, through any USSD enabled to pay GHQR and it's also possible um, to do that. And as a bank, we, pro we provide um, platforms for these to be, this to be possible through um, USSD and also um, working on um, the scan as well. You don't necessarily have to be a customer to use the to, uh, to use the GHQR. Um, you can scan regardless of the bank app you have. So if you are with a different bank, you, you can still scan our GHQR. It's universal. However, we have a short code as well, which you can do the um, uh, dial to pay. So it's in two forms. We have scan to pay and dial to pay. So our short code is star 895 hash. So for ADB, we are very excited about the GHQR uh, product. And we've just upgraded our mobile banking app and the cool feature about it is that um, non-ADB account users can actually use our app to make payments on the GHQR link. All you have to do is download the app from your app store and then go through the registration process and select a mobile wallet for now. And then you can make uh, payments using the GHQR um, platform. So it's, it's exciting for ADB customers and non-ADB customers. GHQR is an electronic payment channel that enables customers to scan displays QR codes with their smartphones and pay or dial displayed USSD codes with their phones to make payments. Ghana's QR code for payment is universal, which means that any customer whose bank or payment service provider offers the service can use it wherever it is displayed. All right, let's settle for international business summaries now. Well, that'll be it for business this hour. I am back after eight with more business news. My name is Gifty Amdorp. Welcome back to Join News Prime to the rest of our stories. The Greater Accra Scrap Dealers Association is appealing to the government to provide an alternative spot for them to relocate. The Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council Thursday embarked on a decongestion exercise at the Agbogulushi Market 
which saw onion sellers and other traders relocated to Ajin Kotoku. Even though the RCC engaged the traders ahead of the relocation exercise, the scrap dealers say they were not part of that engagement. They want the government to provide an alternative spot for them to relocate. Assistant Secretary of the Greater Accra Scrap Dealers Association, Salifu Salim, has been addressed in a news conference. Literal, one of the officials is here. She was a lady and she came and told us that, that we are inside. So I, was, I told her, what is going on? At least if you, are, if you want the land, tell us so that we know. But I keep hearing you are there, you are not there, you are there, you are not there. We are confused. So the way, the kind of passion that the woman was speaking no, I told the guy, let's go and have a look at the site. Because already, we have already choked here. So we needed a land to go and then operate. We needed somewhere to be relocated because we are choked. So I thought that it was an opportunity for us to go and have a look at the place. So the lady gave me the MCE for the new site. That is Ajen Kotoko. He gave me the number and I called the MCE. The MCE told me he's ever ready, we should come. And I said, we are coming immediately. He said, we should come. I came and organized my people. We went there. We stood more than three hours calling the MCE. He keeps telling us he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Till later, he asked the assemblyman there to come and meet us. When the assemblyman came, he took us to a parcel of land. If you look at the size of the size of that land, it's not even up to quarter of what we are occupying. And the assemblyman told us that we are not even for the whole place. They are going to show us some portion. And I told the assemblyman, do you know the scrap yard? He said no. And I told him, we are more than the number, the, the, the size that you are giving us. Even if you are giving the whole size to the scrap yard, it, will, it, it can't be. And the assemblyman insisted that they have instructed him to cut some portion for us. So we're having um, banter with the assemblyman. And I said, okay, then we have to come back. Then tomorrow, then we'll go and tell the regional minister that the land that they have allocated to us is too small. Only for the next day that we saw bulldozers and whatever, then they started destroying us. The regional minister made a whole lot of um, allegations against us and none none of the allegation is true none even one he mentioned that he has given us money to relocate it's a fallacy can he point to us whom he has given the money to because these are the leaders these are the leaders none went for the money and if you look at the way he apportioned the money that will tell you that they were, they are, we are not part. Because he said he has given um, onion sellers 300,000 Ghana cities, um, kettle rares 500,000 Ghana cities, 2,000. And then they came to scrap dealers and he said 50,000. Meanwhile, we are more than 35 people, 35,000 people operating on this land. It says two of their members who were arrested Thursday have been denied bail. Yeah, there are two, and they are still holding them. Uh, one of our brothers uh, visited them this morning to grant them a bail, and they refused. So we don't know why they are holding them. We don't even really know in the first place why they were arrested. We don't know. I don't know whether they were trying to put fear on us. You know, that's sometimes a strategy. It was burning of ties. You cannot claim not to know that your people burnt ties. You see, burning of ties, how did it come and they burned the ties? You understand? In a situation like this, if you see someone destroying your property, daylight, I mean, you can't control yourself. 
Actually, you can control yourself. If we are going to tell you the amount of money that is lying there, you, 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 you feel sorry. We want people to come to our aid because we can't fight the government. No matter how we are, we can't fight the government. We, what we want is we want them to give us a place that can accommodate us. That's all. If they are moving us, they should give us a place that can accommodate all of us. That one, we are ever ready. But if you are relocating 300,000 people to where 10 people will stay, it, it can't hold. You understand? We take a break on Joy News Prime when we return. It's Showbiz with Becky. And it's time for Showbiz. Becky is here with the very latest. Hello, Becky. Hello to you, Aisha. How you doing? I'm doing very well. You're looking beautiful. Thank you. Say. Today is a Friday. Uh -huh. I can't see myself on TV. What's going on? But it's okay. <laughs> Today it's a Friday. I'm very excited mm -hmm. uh, to bring you Showbiz here on Joy News Prime. I like the way you say Joy News Prime. Like, Joy News you know, Prime, the, the, it the, is. The, the voice is good. And your favorite is in the news, Kwame Eugene. Okay. He said that uh, he's always you know believe that he is you know the king of high life music and he champions the genre well and so giving him the uh, high life artist of the year is just you know right. in place yeah it's in order okay <laughs> I'm high life. That's what I feel. That's it. Yeah. Well, how does it feel? What was it? Was it expected? I um, mean, um, you know, it's high life artist of the year, and I'm always waiting for that award. It's mine. So, <laughs> so more reason why I'm asking: Should there be an authority on it that? Oh, this one is for Kwame Eugene. So everybody make it. I think until everybody solely represents high life like I do, go deep down to represent high life. It's still mine, man. Kwame, what does High Life really mean to your musical career? It is Kwame Eugene, it's what made me, it's what taught me what I know today. I actually had to, I mean, um, 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 it's my basic, it's my foundation, that's what makes me. And So everything about me reflects High Life music and I think that's what has, I mean, kept the consistency, that's it. Yeah. So it means you are in pain. Every time you hear Ghanaians, that oh, Ghana music, High Life is dying, Ghana music, they're not reflecting High Life and all that. I mean, where, where, where is it going to lie and die? <laughs> High Life is a genre of music. It dies when everybody stops listening to it. And there are people enjoying High Life music. That is, that is our music. We are enjoying it. So it's not going anywhere. I love that song. That's like my favorite song. Okay. Which one is nice. your favorite song? Do you have a favorite song? I have a lot of favorites from Kwame Eugene. You okay. know that. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's move away from Kwame Eugene. Let's talk about Sister Fia. Sister Fia, uh, she's been doing so well in the industry. Let's give it to her. Okay. Uh, she's one woman that has done you know, incredibly well in, in, in that space okay. and hasn't been given a lot of credit. He was, oh no, she was on Hit FM this morning and mm -hmm. she's been talking about a song, Sika, uh, which he, uh, she featured, Sako de Ekwe Kufle. Okay. So she's been telling us all about the song. Sako de Sako de I'm sure he already knows. He knows that like, he's the best. He's the king of course, of the we're, we're talking about Sister Fia, but Sako de And he's about to release an album uh, we'll bring you details on that very soon. Okay, Let's talk about Mr. Mr. Drew. Drew. I mean, everybody talked about his performance and the fact that uh, he also won the uh, New Artist of the Year. Of the Year. His ginger. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, his ginger to do more. <laughs> the love is so crazy, it's so huge, and I don't even know where it's coming from, honestly. And it's like, it's, 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 it's something that has been built up 
I, I don't even know. I honestly, I don't even know. I think that is just God working. Maybe honestly. you're crazy on the dance floor. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't make you feel unique when everybody, when you hear everybody say, "Oh, Mr. Drew and his dance prowess, Mr. Drew and his dance prowess." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. It makes me feel different, and I know that it's just gonna put a lot of pressure on me to even work harder and even bring more stage craft to my whatever I'm doing. So for me now, like I'm thinking of my next performance on VGM stage, and then even on BET, and then other bigger stages, Sound City, everything. I'm thinking of a bigger, bigger, you know, performance with like a lot of dancers, crazy stuff going on. Trust me, like I'm going, I'm going crazy right now. And that's Mr. Drew. Yeah, I wish for him you. well. Me too. And I think he has a lot Asha, of I think, energy. I think we should also go into the studio. We, we should, should do something. Yeah, we should hit because, the studio one of these things. Because, you know, dancers turn musicians. You know. Yeah, newscasters can also sing. I no, mean, we sing already. The, the last don't... time, the presidential uh, executive secretary, secretary no, no, he, he, he so. and he has a lot of gospel music. You, I mean, why we, not, Becky? You know, it's a deal. Thanks yes, so much please. for bringing us show. Anytime, I it for sure. Chief of Army Staff Major General Opompe Pra has assured the people of Wa, especially victims of military brutalities in the town Thursday, that they are going to fish out all those who took part in the act. At a meeting with the overload of the Wala traditional area and some opinion leaders in Wa, Friday on the incident, he vowed the Ghana Armed Forces will not allow a few miscreants and unguided elements in the service to ruin the golden relationship it has with the people. Join us as Upper West correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from WA. The visit of the five-man high-powered delegation led by the Chief of Army Staff, Major General Thomas Opompepra, is to kill two birds with one stone to apologize to the people and assure residents that those found culpable will be severely dealt with. He first met the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, at his office before rolling out to the One House Palace, where he met the overlord of the Wala traditional area, now for City City Pilipo IV, and some opinion leaders in the Wala municipality. The Wala community is still shocked to the marrow and yet to come to terms with Thursday's brutalities visited on them by over five dozen soldiers who broke loose from the 10 mechanized battalion barracks, went on the rampage and beating any person seen on sight would have been provoked. Jim Penakadir Ibrahim speaks for the war overlord. Wah, a veritable beacon of peace in the country, was suddenly thrown into a state of panic as rampaging men in uniform pounced on unarmed and unsuspecting civilians and pummeled some into pulp. The act was as dastardly as it was unacceptable. The war overlord demands that those who committed the heinous act should be severely punished. The medical bills of the victims taken care of by the military command. The events of yesterday constitute a breach of mutual trust and respect we had for each other and the only damage repair we can accept is if the men dragging the reputation of the noble profession of the military into disrepute are faced out and appropriately punished without delay. Nothing less. We also expect a form of compensation packages for those who suffered serious atrocities under their hands. Major General Open Pepper noted that the military command has lots of reverence for the people of the Upper West region and has committed lots of resources for the safety of the people and therefore not happy with the behavior of the misguided elements in their fold. We have, as you said, been living in harmony. It's rather unfortunate that soldiers who went for training and just passed out and reported only about four days ago, Your Excellency, on behalf of the military high command, please accept our sincere apology. 
And I want to assure you from today, this will not happen again. Never. The Chief of Army Staff, Major General Open Pepper, assured the people of the Upper West region that they are going to fish out all the soldiers who were involved in that Dasadil Act. He stated that they are not going to allow any misprint in the military to spoil the golden relationship that they have with the people of the Upper West region. That we are going to fish out today all those who were involved in this and exact the maximum punishment according to our code of service discipline. Because we will not allow a few to destroy this golden relationship that exists between the good people of this area and the military. I want to assure you that we are here for your protection and nothing else. The chief of army staff later visited one of the victims, 29-year-old Volkanaisa Gafur Mahama, who developed a fractured tie to apologize to him and assured him of supporting him to recover. He pleaded with the victim to have a place in his heart to forgive them for the callous act, promising him of federal medical support outside the region if he wishes. Major General Opon Pepra ended the day having a closed door meeting with personnel of the 10 mechanized battalion who are alleged to have brought the name of the army into disrepute. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Back in the studio, my name is Aisha Prime. Now, the minority in parliament is demanding a parliamentary probe into the assault of some residents of Wa. Minority leader Harun Ejisu says the act of impunity by the military personnel is undermining public confidence in the Ghana armed forces. The minority MPs don't red armbands in the chamber to protest the attacks. Mr. Speaker, you see daily soldiers in uniform, police. We know their duty as defined by this constitution. Maintenance of law and order is the preserve and mandate of the police. Territorial integrity for the Ghana Armed Forces. Where necessary, they can keep their peace, but they have no moral duty to undermine the peace and to abuse the rights and freedoms of innocent Ghanaians. This cannot continue, Mr. Speaker. So I'm urging you to uh, request your committee on defense and interior, Mr. Speaker, to act expeditiously if it means visiting WA, to apprise themselves of the development and the circumstances leading to. The impunity must stop, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I'm seeking your leave as I raise this uh, matter so that uh, we, would, we, would, we would ensure that we can continue to coexist. We don't want a situation and the continuous conduct of the military is undermining civil and public confidence in our Ghana armed forces who have a duty to protect us. Mr. Speaker, I should say this is the conduct of a few a few of them, fair, 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 fair to them. And uh, I'm sure when the committee comes up, Mr. Speaker, I'll have opportunity to raise issue about the quality of the training of these men. Every trigger happy soldiers, every moment you are happy. What kind of training is that? So, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm requesting that the uh, Committee on Defense and Interior, under your guidance, takes up this matter because we risk, we risk. Uh, uh, cracking the civil military relations. Majority Leader Seche Mensa Bonso agreed the Defense and Interior Committee needs to probe the issue further for the House to take a firm decision on the matter. I'm happy that the Minority Leader ended on the note that um, the Speaker may refer further investigation of this matter to the Committee on Defense and Interior. I think it's most appropriate. Because for now, the minority leader is not feeding us with the full particulars of the incident. And I'm not too sure that any of us will be sufficiently clothed with the facts of the matter. We 
may be indulging in speculations if you begin the comment, which may not do justice to the issue at stake. Uh, the leader is telling us about um, lawlessness uh, that is being led by the military. The statement that he himself made was to the effect that somebody snatched a phone from a man in Mufti. Uh, it does appear that that man in Mufti perhaps was uh, um, a military person and that attracted the response. The speaker, we must admit to ourselves that there's creeping lawlessness, I wouldn't say led by the military, but led by us, civilians, by citizens of this country. Mr. Speaker, and we must own up to that, that increasingly we are, we, are, we are seeing symptoms of discipline in society breaking down. And that cannot be happy news for anybody. We talk about uh, what we see during electioneering campaign periods. Elections are over. Defence Minister Dominic Nitewul says the military men involved will be disciplined. I got wing of the matter uh, whilst I was in Parliament here yesterday in the evening. I quickly called both the regional minister who was in Accra but on the way to Wa and also the commanding officer of the unit to find out exactly what the issues were and whether they had officially ask the military to go to town, which they said no. Mr. Speaker, I also got in touch with a member of parliament for West Central, Dr. Rashid Pelpo, who was very helpful in trying for both of us to find a resolution immediately to quell the situation. And so I can report, Mr. Speaker, that yes, it's true. That incident happened yesterday. The military immediately issued a statement this morning condemning what has happened and promising to discipline the, the officers who did that. They have also sent the chief of uh, Adayana Palace, I believe they are currently Adayana Palace, the Wana Palace, uh, to First of all, I apologize to the people for what happened. Uh, the military, uh, my brief on the military is that they've had very good standing relationship with the people of Y in particular. And the people have been very, very uh, helpful in their fight against terrorism and all the things that have gone. So this incident to them is really unfortunate. It shouldn't have happened because one, it was not sanctioned by the regional minister. It wasn't sanctioned by the commanding officers, neither was it sanctioned by anybody in Accra. It was a spontaneous reaction of some young men and women in the armed forces who moved to town to do that with uh, some trigger they felt was the issue. As the, the, the man said, he says that it's true that the trigger was that the military uh, got a report from one of their colleagues that he was hijacked at a knife point in this their yellow yellow uh, tracks and and beating and his mobile phones and money seized and based on that that triggered them to go and mis misbehave so the military used these words that it, what they did was unprofessional uh, conduct if you look at the statement they released they themselves accepted that it was an unprofessional conduct and they are they are going to quickly discipline them Security analyst Emmanuel Bombande has meanwhile called for a comprehensive process that will result in necessary reforms within the security apparatus. Speaking on the AM show, he said brutalities as happened in WA and elsewhere will continue because the military gets away with impunity. What is important at the end of the day is to have value for a process that can be comprehensive enough, but at the same time, uh, see the type of recommendations to be uh, implemented because there is a political will to implement them. Mm. Uh, uh, rather than, than debate, of course, everybody appreciates that a, a commission would be a, a much higher and ele uh, elevated uh, search for the type of 
uh, recommendations that can be more comprehensive. But even if uh, in the circumstances, uh, the commission is not what is in place, but rather uh, an inquiry, what Ghanaians should be interested in at the end of the day is, can it bring the type of reform that can improve upon the situation of how uh, the police and when the police are joined by the military, any joint effort then can respect the rule of law, uh, can respect the dignity of the human person, can provide a type of security that is democratic. But more importantly, if there are key recommendations to be implemented, that it's not just put on the shelf, but that it is truly implemented for Ghanaians to begin to have a sense of confidence that uh, learning out of the challenges that occur, mm. uh, something would happen differently. And I would want to make the comment later on about process for me is more important than simply looking at the incident itself and trying to understand uh, what happened with the incident because that will not be sufficient. I'm more interested in what kind of process the inquiry will take to be able to unearth and, and be more comprehensive in dealing with this menace. A non-governmental organization based in the northern region, Songtaba, has launched 33 months advocacy project dubbed Somu Bijumedie in four districts, the northern and northeast regions, to promote women mental health rights in the country. The districts are Yendi Municipality, Nanumba South, Gushegu, and East Mampusi Municipality. Songtaba works with various district assemblies, traditional authorities, religious leaders, and communities to secure the safety and dignity of women who suffer dehumanizing cultural conditions, including witchcraft accusation. The project, which is being funded by the UK Aid and supported by Ghana, Somu Bijumadie, is aimed at providing access to mental health care related service delivery to about 640 women, including alleged witches in these districts. Speaking at the launch of a project in Tamale, the executive director of Songtaba, Lamnatu Adam, said work done by her NGO shows mental health issues have not featured adequately in the health needs of people in the country. Mental health issues have not really been featured in our health needs. And for us who are working with women to secure basic rights for women and children, especially girls, we come across issues of trauma, issues of depression, especially when we are encountered with women who have been accused and banished from witchcraft accusation. Program team leader of Ghana, Somubi, Jumadie, Leila, Adwan Kamara, said their visit to Ghana, which is camp in the Yeni municipality, established that women aged 80 years do not have national health insurance cards, which they can access medical care. Yesterday, we were honored to be welcomed to the camp at Ghana where we met many older women, some of them over 90 years old, and many of them with a range of disabilities. And these women described their difficulties in making ends meet. And we were saddened and surprised to know that many of them had not been able to access the NHIS, or they had accessed it in the past, but their cards were expired. Most of them had not been able yet to access the LEAP cash transfer scheme nor the District Assembly Common Fund Disability Fund, nor had they been able to regularly and effectively access health care, including mental health care. We hope and trust that alongside the vital work by Santaba and other partners and stakeholders here today, that these women will be supported and that our program will be supported to ensure that the excluded women are able to access the relevant COVID protocols, healthcare, and social protection measures to support their dignity and well-being. Northern Regional Minister Alahaji Alahassan Shani Shaibu on his part said non-operationalization of legislative instrument for the Mental Health Act remains a standing block to the effective delivery of mental health care service. Part of the brain, including mental health in Ghana, has improved.
improved through the infrastructure expansion projects in many hospitals across and also with the current agenda 111 to build more district hospitals with modern equipment to support healthcare delivery in Ghana, including mental care services. Plans are far advanced by my government under the leadership of His Excellency President Abu Fado to build one mental health institution in the northern part of Ghana. One of Ghana's key math icons, Professor Nyonam Sichofe Anko, will be laid to rest tomorrow, Saturday, July 3. The funeral rite will be held at the ICGC Calvary at Sakumono at 7 a.m. Until his death, Professor Anku held the strong belief that a key to solving Ghana's problem is mathematics. To achieve this, he spent greater part of his teaching life encouraging both students and teachers to love maths and demystify the phobia for the subjects. In the following report, we are joining you celebrate Professor Anku for what he stood for. There are too many people failing mathematics because they don't understand the principles and methods of mathematics. And they think it's difficult. It's not difficult. It's very, very easy. He spoke mathematics. You see, suppose I want to teach my students a, uh, a parallelogram. How do I say that in my language? I don't know. How do you say, how do you say that in Chi? Or I don't in, know. In way? Do you know how to say? <laughs> do you know? He lived mathematics. His world was mathematics. And mathematics is life. So you, we keep saying everything you do contains mathematics. And I want to challenge you before we leave. <laughs> Give me any area of life that you think there's no mathematics. And I'll show you the mathematics in there. Prof. Sanku was convinced that mass is a major key to unlocking Ghana's development. His focus was not just the students, but teachers and all in sundry. He was very outspoken, direct and unbending in his argument as far as mass was concerned. How come that we build houses three story, four story, five story, when we try hard six story, you collapse it and kill people in Ghana. Six story, you collapse, you kill people. But you go elsewhere, you go and find 162 story buildings standing. 162, 300, 200, 100, 120, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. And add two, it's standing. In Ghana, three, four, five, brrr, three, four, five, brrr, three, four, five, brrr, killing people every time. Why? It is all because of very simple mathematics knowledge that they are not applying. Very simple mathematics knowledge of ratio. Do you calculate the weight of what is going to go to second floor, third floor, fourth floor? Do you calculate it? Look at Malcolm, what happened? They are putting the heavy things up. The Malcolm uh, disaster. The heavy things were going up. So the structures couldn't carry. So the thing collapsed and killed people. And when they killed people, somebody used a finger you know, to go and scratch the wall. And we're supposed to use the finger to scratch the wall. Because the ratio of cement to sand to water was not correct. He won't buy into the cliche that students don't like maths because it is a difficult subject. For him, it is the teachers who are the problem and must be fixed. He believed that the manner in which the subject is introduced to students and taught in schools were problematic. Correcting the problem must start with the teachers. Yes, we've trained over 800 teachers from the 10 regions of Ghana here. Yeah. And when they come, I talk to interview them, I give them tests and I see the way they respond. Yeah. Ask myself, are these the teachers of mathematics? Yeah. If they are the teachers of mathematics, then what are they teaching the students? You see, a lot of them don't understand the mathematics. They don't know how to teach the mathematics for understanding. That alone relates to real life situations for the students to appreciate, you know, the importance of what they are studying. School children were not left out of his special attention for mass education. The Megasa Academy Mass Camp was a solution center for school children, both at the basic and secondary levels during school vacations, who are challenges in mathematics. Amid all of these events, 
The objective stood constant for Prof. Sanku, thus demystifying mathematics to enable students develop love and discard the phobia surrounding the subject. A number of his students have been successful under his leadership. We are going to form a team in our district so that we'll be teaching or impacting the knowledge on children on cluster basis so that every child in the district will be transformed. If you are the, that kind of teacher who maybe like shouting at students or you like making certain comments, you are fool, you can't even make it, those kind of things. You make students fear the subject because already there is that notion that mathematics is difficult. The two weeks here at Joy News, he was our first spot of call anytime we needed experts in maths. He was a regular guest despite his mobility challenges. Beyond the hard issues, it was fun having him in studio. Is there mathematics in love? Plenty of it. How? Hmm. How are uh, you? You ask, ask a very, very big question. You know, when I come here all the time, <laughs> I keep talking that people say mathematics is blind. Uh, sorry, love is blind, blah, blah. They say all of those things. You know, we, we talk of, we have a national mathematics day. I presented a lot from here. And uh, that is on the 14th of February every year. Mm. These people must show love to mathematics. You know, 14th February is Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Who go to celebrate whatever. We say for that day, don't waste your time. Go and show love to mathematics. Because there is a very big connection. Mathematics is, is it, love is not blind. It's a choice you make. Mm. The deliberate choice you make. That's what mathematics says about love? Yeah. Mathematics is action to solve problems. You see? So how do you bring that into love? Like, I mean, I find uh, Paul here and I'm in love with Paul. How is there math in that? It's a, it's a choice you make. Out of several polls, there's Paul, there's Citrope, there's somebody else. Mm -hmm. You're going to choose one. You're going to make a choice. So that's math? That's a great. Yeah, it's mathematics. Making choice is mathematics. Okay. You, know, you see, you have options. Mm -hmm. So what makes you make a particular choice? You have got some criteria. Mm -hmm. The criteria must be very clear. I'm not choosing you because you are tall, black, beautiful. What is it? Mm -hmm. You must be conscious of these things. So you do some calculations and you remove, you do some, um, uh, uh, re you remove some, I've forgotten the mathematical expression for that. So you do the calculation, you calculate each and every one of the people you have, uh, uh, you calculate their, um, the, uh, you calculate, is, 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 calculate is, is, whatever they yeah, have by the criteria you have and then you subtract and you know you take consciously or unconsciously mm. you are doing all these calculations in the mind okay you see they are going to influence you may his soul rest in perfect peace Professor Sichefe and Co. may so rest in peace. But if you haven't calculated your partner yet, start calculating addition, subtraction, multiplication, and make a choice. We'll take a break. We'll bring you second part of business. <music> Hello there, I'm back again. My name is Gifty Andopi. I've got your business this hour. The Embassy of Japan is collaborating with the United Nations Development Program Office in Ghana to support 2K projects in helping minimize the impact of COVID-19 on the country's infrastructure. The project includes the use of digital toolkit to support the provision of essential services for the vulnerable during and post COVID-19 pandemic. It also seeks to help to keep the country's borders and territorial waters safe from pirate attacks. Here is a report from a ceremony to kickstart the two projects here in Accra. Project, apart from promoting some initiatives under the Sustainable Development Goals, will enhance capacity of health officials at various entry points of the country. This will help health officials attend to travelers entering the country with cargo to trade without any challenge. Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaji, hinted that this will deal with the challenge of taking care of traders along border communities. Our greatest threat is imports. And so looking at the port of 
entry at the land borders and being able to test as many people as possible would go a long way to reduce importation of the viruses. Now cargo comes into the country, cargo comes to drivers and mates, and these, these people need to be tested. And you know how some of our borders are, they are in one town that's been divided into two. So testing, providing a mobile testing facility there will be very, very helpful. The other component which involves safety along the maritime borders will be implemented by the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. Resident representative of UNDP, Dr. Angela Lusigi, spoke with Joy Business after a short ceremony to kickstart the two projects. Important is that as we respond to COVID, we want to make sure that we don't lose sight of the other essential services that are required. So this project helps right community health services to be able to reach the most vulnerable who might not be reached because of the COVID response. So on one hand, we are looking at the equipment that is required to be able to address uh, essential services, but we are also looking at digital tools that will help them to be able to access these services. Japanese ambassador to Ghana, Himenu Chutomu, told Joy Business that the embassy will use these two projects to enhance its support as the country fight the impact of the pandemic. We see all over the world, we are struggling to counter the effects of COVID-19. And Japan has been supporting the efforts of the government the people of Ghana to fight against COVID-19, including in supporting the providing uh, vaccines uh, through the international cooperation and also providing the facilities of freezers and storage for the government of Ghana to deliver vaccines to all parts of Ghana. Provider of mobile delivered uh, health and insurance services, BIMA, has moved to make micro insurance accessible at even the remotest part of the country. As such, the company has commenced the establishment of what it calls experience centers in various communities across the country. According to the company's country manager, Valerie Labi, the move is part of efforts to boost insurance penetration. There is more in this report. The BIMA Experience Center will serve as a medium for providing the company's flagship services such as B-Health and B-Life insurance policies to ensure easy and affordable access. The company established the first center at Choco, a suburb of Accra. The policies will provide customers access to qualified medical practitioners as well as provide financial relief against funeral expenses and loss of income due to permanent disabilities. Valerie Labi is the country manager for BIMA. The focus of the Experience Centre is really twofold. For new people who want to learn about BIMA, you can come to the Experience Centre, talk to one of our Experience Centre executives, learn about our products and our services. You can also potentially, from time to time, get free health screening and get a free health consultation from one of our doctors via the telephone um, using our telemedicine service. We're also dedicated to supporting our existing customers, many of which are living in communities such as Chokor, um, and who we appreciate and we want to make sure that we can put a face to the brand so that if you have any claims, if you have any questions, if you have people that you even want to join us as employees, you can come to the center and you know talk to someone, make your recommendations. The BIMA MD also debunked assertions that microinsurance is a risky venture. One of the things about mitigating riskiness is also by making sure that people have access to the right services to support them as they go through and make decisions for their family. So not only are we supporting people to access quality healthcare through telemedicine and our doctors being at the other end of the phone, we're also piloting services like tele, um, um, pharmaceutical delivery. The policies will be underwritten by both Alliance Life Ghana and Prudential Life Insurance and premiums are priced at as low as six cities. Chief Executive of Alliance Insurance, Gideon Atarari, underscored the role of microinsurance to improving insurance penetration. Microinsurance is doing well with reach. Now, because of microinsurance, a lot of people now know so much about insurance. And that's for us one of a very, very key. Because from there, the insurance knowledge, insurance education is spreading like wildfire. But if you bring it back to penetration, yes, by the time we increase the reach, 
it, it still boils down to increase in revenue and all of that, which eventually will lead to increased penetration. So microinsurance will play a very big role in the insurance penetration drive. The BIMA Experience Center is in partnership with German International Corporation, GIZ. According to a technical advisor at the GIZ, Fred August, his outfit is committed to public sensitization on insurance. One of the activities identified is that um, we have identified that at least 2.4 million Ghanaians are under the poverty line. They earn less than $10 in a day. And we think that in improving this, we would need something in the area of insurance to be able to deal with this matter. We have set out to do this and we are happy to say that uh, the private sector is coming on board. The event was graced with free health screening for the Choco community. Some members of the community shared their excitement. The Bima Experience Center goes with the tagline, Closer to You. Traders who were removed from the Anafo market in Cape Coast have expressed anger at government over the stored market project. Government pulled down the old market structure and began the construction of a new one. But the traders say construction has stalled for the past six months. At a news conference in Cape Coast, the traders called on the Coastal Development Authority and the First Lady who led the project to do everything within their power to make the contractor get back to site. They say the inability of government to complete the project in the 12 months promised them has brought untold hardships on them. Richard Kwejonyako was at the press conference and has come through with this report. The Anafo market in Cape Coast is said to be the oldest market in the ancient capital. Nearly two years ago, the market that has stood for over a century was pulled down. The traders were assured of a new market that will be built in 12 months. The contractor has packed and left the construction site since the beginning of the year. The traders say they are getting disappointed and most importantly, they can no longer endure the hardships they are going through. Kujando is one of the leaders that pushed for the market to be built. first lady buy. First lady buy no Obaba Kateso on the tenth. I was starting human. The metabolism is about two room. And see, I'm a part of your bill and bill. Now, why you human? The first lady came here. She came here to help cut the sword for the project to begin. The project started in earnest. It was before the election, and so work went on hurriedly. The work progressed steadily. Here we are after the elections. The contractor has parked from the construction site. The traders are now blaming we, the leaders who preach for the project. We want to tell the whole world that the contractor has parked from the site. For the past six months, he's not been here. We are calling on the Coastal Development Authority, the First Lady, and the MCE to make them act fast to bring back the contractor. Market women have been speaking to Joy News. The Nafu market is the oldest market. Where they have brought us is nothing to write home about. We are simply suffering here. I am pleading that they should complete the market so, so we could go back there. We are in debt and debtors are on our neck because business here is not good. Our businesses are not doing well at all. We are begging. We are incurring costs where they have brought us. The whole day they would buy nothing. Yesterday, for instance, my sales was 50 pesos. How do I eat? We are pleading with government to help us out by completing what is left so we can go back. 
since I will be one, my minister will be one time, 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 one we are under the mercy of the weather where we are, and it is dangerous too because it is very close to the road. Our sales have dropped significantly. I, for instance, sell ice cream, ice blocks, and other things. But since the market was pulled down, my business has collapsed. We keep on battling with thieves. They keep on stealing from us. The traders want government to intervene to ensure that the market project is completed and delivered in the speed of light as they assured them. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenya Akon, and now for Cape Coast. That will be all for me tonight. There is more news at myjoyonline.com. And of course, Gary L. Smith is standing by with more in sports. And then Aisha Ibrahim will take over. My name is Gifty Andropia. Have a good evening and have a good weekend when you do. Thank you for staying with us on Joy News. Prime Gary Al Smith with the sport and three-time champion Spain survived another scare to beat 10-man Switzerland in a dramatic penalty shootout to reach their semis of the European Championships. Now, Swiss substitute Ruben Vargas was in tears at full time after he blasted his penalty over the bar, allowing Mikel Oyathabal to score the decider for Spain. And in the ongoing game, Belgium are losing to Italy by two goals to one. We are in the 89th minute of that game. That game is on Joy Prime. Can switch over after the news and pop in for the last few minutes. Chelsea defender Barara Man has backed Asante Kotoko to win the season's Ghana Premier League title. Despite trailing leaders heart of folk, now the Porcupine Warriors are three points behind the Phobians, after their defeat in last weekend's Super Clash with just three games to go, Barbara Man, who played for Kotoko between 2011 and 2012, is hoping that uh, Accra side will drop points. This is um, one of the best um, leagues um, I've watched, not even when I was playing. I've watched um, maybe since um, the last 10 years, 10, 15 years. And um, it's really exciting to, to see uh, the big giants like going for it. I can imagine. I mean, yeah. as we speak right now, at the time of airing the interview, um, Heart of Oak have just beaten Asante Kotoko in the Super Clash to go ahead in the title race. Did you watch the match? I watched it, and uh, unfortunately, my team lost. But <laughs> I think um, uh, we are still in contention. We have um, four games more or less to go, so um, a little slip from, from House of Oak and then um, we are back on top again. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel watching, watching them? I mean, how far they've come and everything? Um, when I watched um, the game over the weekend, um, it was really great because I saw a lot of intensity, a lot of passion. And um, the guys um, really try to go for it. And I think um, um, Hustle Folk really started with a bit of agency. And I think it helped them throughout the game. So it's, um, it's really great to see uh, the, the Ghana Premier League like progressing in, 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 in such way. Now, your team as Ante Kotoko have a fight on their hands. If you've got a message for them, what would it be? Um, like over the years, they've, they've been champions um, f quite some time now and um, for, for a true champion, you just need to keep fighting to, 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 the, last, uh, to the last point. So I think um, it's going to be like um, a good fight for them and also a motivation for them and um, let's hope that um, has um, taken a slip. Legon Cities have enjoyed a good run of form in the second half of the Ghana Premier League season, which has almost ensured their safety in the league. Now, the Accra Base Club, who were once relegation candidates in the first half of the season, now lie 10th on the table and look ahead to next season. Speaking to Joy Sports, the head coach Bashir Hayford says their bad form in the first round was because some of his players do not. Meet Premier League standard. They, they taught, they taught, but what people have been saying that uh, the club has money. Some of them came in, 
just to have something to do, not to do something. The difference between having something to do and doing something. When you are going for players, you want you go in for players who want to do something for themselves and the club. But if you go in for play, the players who want something to do with me, they want enjoyment, they want employment. So you have employed every month they cut a salary. It's okay. He doesn't need anything again. And I, I saw that those who are who, who came in with the knowledge that they want a job because Lagos City have a money and so they are there, they were more than those who want to do something for themselves. And so well, no matter what you do, you have to change that orientation. And that is another point I, I got. So quickly I had to also go deep into my uh, psychological discipline and, 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 and make sure I change that orientation. And then the last one I also detected was that some of the, of the players, per my standard, are not up there. They are not up to premier side. But because they have been brought together, uh, you know, it's a mixture of some quality ones, some mediocre ones, some this one. So it is very difficult to, to blend. And the transformation has been like, after identifying the problem, it gives you half solution of it. But already you know the problem, so you know how to solve it. So quickly I had to make sure I use some players to play some positions that they have not played before. So it will not take a day or two. For instance, all my strikers I came to meet, Uklu, Sifas, and those things. We played about seven matches, and they have not even scored one goal. So I had to bring in midfielders to play for me. So I brought in somebody like Ado, Baba Mahama, Atukui, they're from the middle to come and strike for me. And that was where we started getting one or two uh, goals. You know, so it means you are changing their, their roles. And uh, it will not take uh, just few days. And so, God so willing or oh, good, they are, they, are, they are taking their training seriously. And the little uh, you know, teaching that we are doing, they are taking it. And so, they are, they are changing now. So let's check out the full fixtures of GPL week 32. What does it look like? Asante Kotoko play King Faisal, that will be on Saturday. Legon City's play Bechem United. Dreams FC play Bregum Chelsea Great Olympics 11 Wonders. All those two are Sunday. In addition to Wafa Inter Allies, Dwarves, Heart of Oak, Mediama Elmina Sharks, Liberty Karela, and Adriana Ashcode. And finally, the Member of Parliament for Fajato South, Angela Alaute, has committed resources to help sporting talents in their constituency. The office had partnered with the John Paintill Football Academy to scout footballers and nurture them into professional players. There's more in the following report. Identifying sports meant Madame Alaou saw the need to invest in promoting soccer which, she is optimistic, would have various impacts on the constituents. In the light of this, a 10-day scouting session is underway to identify football talents and nurture them. 40 community teams are taking part in the session, where five best performing players would be selected to join the John Pistol Academy in Accra. A set of 22 players would also be selected to form a lower division side, which would be Queenstown Afajatu Football Club. A former Black Star player and owner of the academy, John Pinstel, is in charge of the scouting exercise. I don't know anybody. I don't know any color. I don't know any player. But I'm here to pick talent. It's talent, that is why I'm here. The trophy, the jerseys, the boots, I don't care about them. What I care is about you being selected and the best ones. John Painting don't need to see you for 10, 20, 30, 90 minutes to know you are a footballer or you are talented. Get that right. Your movement, your body language, your dressing, communication, your first touch, running without the ball, Hitting the ball from far, pocket passes, locking your ankle, jumping, heading, skills, leg overs, many more. So if you have all this, 
There's no way your competitive will work. Kadam will leave you behind. Madam Alaudi told why she decided to undertake the initiative. As the MP of Afaja to South, I realized the, there is so much talent in football. Uh, our youth are very interested and most of them will want to become professional footballers. So that is one of the reasons. The second reason is that we want to also have the Afaja to South Football Club where we'll, we'll join the Division 1 or we'll form a Division 1 team and then also I see how far we could go. So that is the second reason. The third is that we want to make a name for the constituency. We want to make a name by also folding international players. The reason we partnered with, uh, or we are partnering uh, John Pinstel to be able to groom our boys so we also can, can go out there, play for Ghana, play for other nations that will be interested in our, our players. It is the hope of the residents that the initiative would translate into economic growth to enhance their livelihoods. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Vergolo Kwati. So yeah, the Italians have booked their place. We'll see how that one goes. Remember, earlier today, Switzerland were beating, and uh, it should be a nice matchup. Gary Al Smith here. And as I wrap up the bulletin tonight, my name is Aisha Ibrahim. For more news, log on to myjohnline.com. You will have all the developing stories and updates over there. Do enjoy the rest of our stories and have a good weekend.